What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey, hey, everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight... Tonight! Okay, making their debut on the channel tonight... Tonight! We have Zonder Fates. Yes, indeed, how about that? Zonder Fates making their debut on the channel. Before we go any further, for those of you who are feeling inclined to doing all the clicks and the likes and the bibbity boobity bop, do me a favor, before you do all that stuff, please watch the whole video first, okay? Give me a chance to actually earn those clicks and likes. Now, after the video's done, if you still feel like doing all those clicks and likes, then by all means, feel free to click away. This comes as a request from Aussie1969, and Aussie1969 wanted to see me react to this song by Zonder Fates called A Pleasant Shade of Grey. Now, have I heard the song before? No, I have not. To the best of my knowledge, this does not resonate with me in any way, shape, or form. However, there's always a possibility I may have heard the song in passing and I just don't realize it. So as always, if I start listening to the song and I suddenly go, wait a minute, time out, I recognize this song, I'll let you know. That's the truth. You know me, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This was posted by Mark Zonder, Okay, I think I'm seeing where the Zonder face comes from, at least the Zonder part. And the video has 1,643 views. Eh, it's not gonna get you there, sorry. Look, I I'm sure the song is fine, I'm sure the video is fine. I I'm just saying, 1,643 views, it's not gonna get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the video description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say, you ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right, here we go. Zonder Fates, A-P-S-O-G. Uh, a pleasant shade of gray. Okay, I, I got it, I got it. Uh -huh. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. <laughs> I guess this is just a, a drum cam thing. Uh, we're not, I'm hearing the rest of the members of the band. I can hear them, um, but we're not seeing them. <laughs> That's not to say they're not there. I mean, they're, they're playing live, so I, I'm sure they're there. Uh, but it looks like we're gonna be watching the drummer the whole time. It's interesting to watch a drummer in a rock band playing in a, now I, I've heard, Drummers, uh, I've heard all different drummers call this different things. I, I've heard, for the most part, I've heard it called traditional grip. 
I've heard it being called classic grip. I've heard it called uh, marching grip. Uh, I, I've heard a lot of things where you have the left hand turned palm up and the stick is you know coming down this way. Mostly I've heard it called traditional grip. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 like I said, for the most part, I would say out of every 10 drummers I've ever worked with, I would say about six of them call it uh, traditional. About three of them will call it classic, and there'll be that one drummer that calls it marching grip. And I'm just like, I don't know what to call it. So I'm sure every drummer has their own opinion. Obviously they do. I'm just gonna go with traditional grip. That's why the, the majority of drummers I've worked with have called it. Um, it's interesting to see him playing with a traditional grip. It is interesting, and it's working. It's definitely working for him. Uh, I love the single stick rolls that he's doing from the hi-hat to the snare to the hi-hat to the snare. Really nice. Uh, all being done with that right hand. Very slick, very, very slick. Uh, it's smooth drumming. Smooth drumming on his part. I'm liking everything I'm hearing. Not overusing the cymbals. Thank God. Why I cannot stop. Get it when sim when drummers just symbol 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 symbol. God, that drives me nuts. Anyway, let's keep going here and uh, let's see how this goes. <laughs> I like his setup. His setup is so smart. I love the fact that he is not afraid to have more than one hi-hat. He's got this hi-hat over here that is, it, it sounds like it's not being controlled by the foot at all. It sounds like it's it's not fully closed, it's not, it's not fully shut, but it's just open just ever so slightly and it stays there. It, it doesn't open any further, it doesn't close tight. It's, it's completely independent. Um, well, he has the other hi-hat over here that he is controlling with his foot. Cause I've seen it open, I've seen it close. Um, splash over here, splash over here. It's mirrored. China here, China here. So you got hi-hat splash China, hi-hat splash China. I think that's brilliant. That way he can go to either side and he's got the exact same setup on either side of him. So he could go either way and it's gonna be ready for him. He doesn't, there's no thought process. There's no trying to figure things out on the fly. No, it's all set right there exactly where it needs to be. Very, very smart. I think that is absolutely brilliant. Um, the pad. I've had a lot of people ask me in comments, what do I think about electronic drum pads? I got no issue with them, honestly. Uh, it's, and I, know, I know a lot of drummers do, oh, they're not real drums. Yeah, you're right, they're not real drums, but you know what? I've seen a lot of percussion instruments that I wouldn't call drums either. So, I mean, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, my junior year in high school, I, I, did, I did winter drum line. I was in the pit. It was fun, I had a, I had a great time doing it. Our snare section, came up with this idea to uh, 
for during this during the snare break uh, when they were going to do their thing, they all had Snapple bottles. You guys remember Snapple? Remember that god awful drink, Snapple? Yeah, loaded with sugar, Snapple. Yeah, the drum line was addicted to that stuff. Um, they had Snapple bottles, rubber banded to the harnesses between the harness and their snare stuck right there and they actually used them in their show they actually used it they actually played on the snapple bottles while they were doing their their snare routine uh, is a snapple bottle a drum nope <laughs> it's a bottle but they used it as a percussion instrument so i have no issue with electronic drum pads i got no problem with them at all it adds a different sound. It adds a new depth and a new layer to what the drummer is able to do. I don't see the problem. I know a lot of traditional drummers have a big issue with them. I don't know why, but I, I got no issue with them at all. Look at, uh, look at Rick Allen from Def Leppard. The biggest album they ever put out. Hysteria, right? The biggest album they ever put out. His kit was 80% pads right during that era now obviously he doesn't use pads anymore he, it's pretty much his entire setup now is is acoustic drums but uh back in the 80s man the late 80s 80 percent. like seriously if you go back and watch videos of him 80 percent of his drum set was was pads and triggers so got no issue with it it sounded really good and how many how many millions of copies did that album sell 12 million 15 million something like that Biggest album they ever had. So, anyway, let's keep going here. Got that hi hat going the whole time. Nothing the drummer is doing is is making me cringe. The drummer's fine. I can just hear the vocalist. All of a sudden, he is flat, like <laughs> flatter than a deflated tire. I mean, what in the hell is that singer doing? What's the matter with you? Like it's so flat. It sounds intentional. Like he is trying on purpose to sing flat. Cause he's not doing anything to fix it. Oh, 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 oh my good lord. Ah, <laughs> sounds bad. The drummer's the drummer's fine. The drummer is absolutely fine. I got no issue with the drummer at all. Oh, the vocalist. Woo. Huh. I uh I mean it sounded good. It sounded fine. I just I question some of the choices there at the end. From the drummer. I'll 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 tell you what I mean by that. Um I'm not sure how I'm gonna score this. Am I scoring the song? Or am I scoring the drumming? Oh no. I wasn't told. The requester didn't tell me it was a drum cam for starters. 
And he didn't tell me if he just wanted me to check out the drummer or check out the whole song. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I need to think about this. I, I need to think about how I'm going to approach this. Uh, let me get my thoughts together. I'll see you in the review, and we'll talk about it. Well, there you go, folks. That was Zonder Fates with A Pleasant Shade of Grey. This was a request from Aussie1969. Okay, um, before I give my score, I thought about this, and I, I, I looked at this from two different approaches, and... I look okay. I looked at it from the approach of let's evaluate the song, and then I looked at it as let's just evaluate the drumming. Since since this is definitely a drum cam video, okay, let's call a spade a spade here. This was definitely focused on the drumming. So should I think about should I think about evaluating and reviewing the song, or should I just put all my focus on the drumming? And if I, I looked at both perspectives and I came up with two completely different scores. Um, I mean, completely different scores. Uh, so I decided to go with the drum. I, I just the approach of looking at this as a drum cam video. So let's just focus on the drumming. Okay, we're gonna put the song aside now. Don't ask me which score would have been higher. Would it have been the the, the song would have been higher, or just the drums were higher? It doesn't matter, okay? It really doesn't matter because I'm not I'm not going to be giving that score for the song anyway. It's a, it's a complete non-issue. So focusing just on the drums, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give that an 8.2. Yep, 8.2. I feel good about that score. Let me tell you why. Why? Okay, um, I'm gonna start with the drummer's setup. I like his setup. I, I think it's a very smart setup. The way that he has his drums literally mirror imaged on either side, on the left and the right side. He had a hi-hat, he had a splash, and he had a china, bing bop boop, right at opposite of each other in, in mirror fashion, you know what I mean? Uh, the only difference was I think on the left side, his left side, our right, looking at the screen, our right side, uh, but on his left, the splash was turned upside down, where on the on his right side, the, the splash was the way it normally is supposed to be. Uh, I think that was the only difference. Other than that, they were exactly the same. Uh, it looked like the left was, the hi-hat was set. It was a set hi-hat, where it was just ever so slightly open. Where at, and it, there was no foot control on that one. It was just, it, that's the way it was designed to be. It was locked, it was not gonna change. Whereas the one on the left-hand side was foot controlled. He was able to open and close it with his foot. Um, I think that's really smart. It, it's really smart because it sets it up so that if you're working on the right side, it's all right there. If you had to switch over to the left side, it's all right there. I, I think it's very smart. I like it when drummers set up their drum sets independently in a way that works for them the most and you get the most effectiveness out of it uh going back to the danny carey video where he had the hi-hat right in the middle of his drum set works for him you know it absolutely works for him so i don't see the issue but i know there's a lot of drummers out there who have this mindset of uh -uh, the, the, the hi-hat has to be on the left side it can't be on the right it can't be in the middle it has to be on the left says who says who seriously your your, your drum instructor told you that <sighs> <laughs> man, you need to get with the times. <laughs> Listen, when, when you're learning how to play an instrument, there is a certain way you're supposed to play. Yes, that is true. So you can learn the basics, you can learn fundamentals, but once you get past basics and fundamentals and you can start to develop yourself and develop your own style of play, who's to say that you can't set up your drums of the way you want? I, I can equate to this. Look at guitar players and look at bass players who detune or tune their instruments in weird ways. I'm in a band where I play six string bass, right? And my bass is tuned to drop D, okay? I, I tune my bass to drop D. So my low string, my, my B string is dropped down to A, right? Wrong, my D, my D string uh, my, my B string, instead of being tuned down to A, I actually tune up to a C. 
So my my instrumentation is C D G. Oh, it's good. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> C D G. Uh, the D would be a C, so C, and then my G string would be an A, and my C string would be a B flat. So, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, no, it's a weird tuning. It's a really weird tuning, but it's true though. I, 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 I have all of my strings tuned to drop D, except for my low B, which I actually tune up to a C. And you know why I do that? Because it works for the music I'm playing. It, it, you have to think about that. There's no rule that says every song, every string has to be a perfect fourth. Says who? I know bass players who seriously tune every string a perfect fifth. Nothing wrong with that. That that if that's what works for them, it's what works for them. There's no rules. What are the rules? What are the rules? There are no rules when it comes to how you set up your instrument. You're the one playing it. You set it up the way that you want. Same thing here with drummers. If you're gonna set up your drum kit the way that you want, the way that works for you, and it makes it comfortable for you, and you can make it work, I got no issue with it, none whatsoever. Um, it was interesting to watch him playing with a traditional grip. Now, like I said, I've heard it called classical grip, I've heard it called traditional grip, mostly traditional grip, but I've heard it called cl uh, classical grip, but I've even heard some drummers call it marching grip, and I'm just like, I mean, that's true. That is how much how most marching bands do, but at the same time, I'm like, I it's very rare I'll hear a drummer call it that. Maybe one out of every ten drummers I've ever worked with. More actually more than more like one out of every like 25 or 26. But in any case, I have heard it called that. You don't see too many rock drummers playing in that grip. And I, I it's a shame because I think it's a I think it's a great grip. I think it's very versatile. Uh it, it definitely makes rolling easier. Um I've heard it called jazz grip. I mean, I've heard it called so many different grips, but you don't see that grip being used very often by rock drummers. I don't think I've ever worked, like me personally, I don't think I've ever worked with a rock drummer that had that grip. Jazz drummers, yes, all the time, but rock drummers, not that I can think of, not off the top of my head. Um, but it was really cool to see that, and he, he made it work for him. Loved the rolls that he was doing on the right hand from the, the hi-hat to the snare to the hi-hat to the snare. I, I think that was one of the most impressive things I saw from his drumming. Um, the use of pads. Okay, now here's here's where I have, this, this is my point of confusion. This is not a criticism. I, I'm just really confused. Uh, I have no problem with the pad usage. I think I made that pretty clear during the course of my reaction. I got no problem with pad usage. I got no problem with pads being used and being spaced out for triggers and stuff like that. I got no issue with it at all. But I am a little curious. Why? Two, okay, I'm curious about two things. He had, while he was playing the pad on the right side, he was hitting a splash trigger. He, one of the pads was set to it, not a splash, a china. He was hitting one of the pads that it was a china. The funny thing is, right above that pad was an actual china. So why was he hitting a synthetic china when there was literally a china right above the pad? All he had to do was that, and he would have been hitting the real china. Same thing with the snare. He had a he had a real snare, and right next to the snare was another trigger for a snare. That sounded almost the exact same as this real snare. So I mean, I I just don't understand why, you know, but. I'm sure he has his reasons. I'm sure there's a purpose behind it. I just don't know what that purpose and that reason is. Um, I would love to talk to him. I, I would love to talk to him. And, I, I'm, and I'm like I said, this is not a criticism. I'm just curious. Why would you hit a China patch when you have a real China, like literally a foot above it? And why would you hit a snare trigger for an electric snare drum when you have a real snare drum literally a foot away not even a foot away probably looked, it looked to me like about six to six to eight inches away so i don't know why i i, like I said I, i'm sure he has his reasons and it sounded fine it, it sounded good i just i don't understand why you wouldn't just use the real thing but in any case i thought the drumming was good um <laughs> if i'm being honest the drumming was the best part of that song i'm i'm sorry i, I don't 
I don't mean to be offensive and I don't mean to upset any fans of the band or the band themselves if they ever watch this video, but I gotta be honest, guys, the, the drumming was the highlight, absolutely. Um, so 8.2 for the drumming, I thought that was a really nice job. I think I think he did a great job, honestly. A little confusion, but um, I'm sure he had his reasons. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, if by chance the drummer for the band does watch this video, uh, please feel free to email me, reach out to me, and I, I'm serious. I would love to know the reasons why, because I'm curious. I'm not. I'm not being critical. I'm not being. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I, I'm actually genuinely curious to know why you would choose to use pads over the real thing when the real thing is literally less than a foot away. I, I'm sure you have your reasons. I'm sure you do, and I would love to hear them. Um, because it would really help clarify things for me. But uh, in any case, 8.2, I feel good with that score, and that's where we're gonna stay. So, 8.2, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's gonna do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hope I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, I did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you guys feel like joining the fan base, go ahead and click on that button down there. If you guys wanna like the video, go ahead and like the video. If you guys wanna ring the bell, go ahead and ring the bell. It honestly doesn't make any difference at all to me, but if you guys feel like doing these things, then by all means, feel free to do so. Well, that's gonna do it for tonight, folks. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.